My name is Vanessa, hello everybody, and welcome to another story inspired by the amazing paintings in Leighton House Museum. And this story is inspired by Lord Leighton's painting of Daedalus and Icarus, and it is a retelling of the myth of Icarus. However, this is a different variant. So if you think you know the story of Icarus, think again because this one is a little bit different. I mean it is still about King Minos, uh, the evil king of Crete and it is still about Icarus the boy and his father Daedalus, the inventor who was so brilliant that he could make statues that you had to chain up because they were so lifelike, if you didn't chain them up, they would walk away. He could design anything. He could build anything. That was Daedalus. And Daedalus had been summoned secretly to see King Minos in the middle of the night. And he and Icarus, who helped him with his work, had to go to the palace and they had to go to a, a back way and the guards showed them down these deep stairs and um, into an underground chamber where the king was lit by flickering firelight. And the king sent away the guards and Icarus and he beckoned old Daedalus close and he said, I have a problem. The gods have cursed me. They have given me a, a monster. I have to keep him near me. I can't kill him, but I want to hide him. And I need you to build me a hiding place, to go to the island and tunnel out a secret underground maze and we will put this monster in it and I want the maze to be such that as the monster stumbles in it will go this way and this way and get lost forever and never never find its way out. Could you build an underground maze like this? And Daedalus said, um, of course your majesty. Good said the king well you will stop wait he said who is that that's just uh, that's just my boy Icarus he said uh he, he he will cause no trouble it better not said the king so, the next day they had to go to the island to start designing and building the secret underground maze or labyrinth which you've probably heard about um, and to get to the island they had to go by boat and in those days boats were all the same they were rowing boats and you would have someone pulling the oars you know oh and you push with your feet and um, you usually would have more than one person so you might have two or 10 or even 20 or 50 people all pulling. And of course, the more people that you have, the faster it goes and the bigger the craft is that you can, um, that you can propel. In order to make it so that everyone's pulling on the oars at the same time, you've got somebody who's banging a drum. And what happened is they will bang the drum and the rowers will row all together and this is exactly how they got to the island Daedalus and his son Icarus um, rowed, uh, were, were rowed across and what followed then were many boats with slaves and they climbed up this cliff like some stairs that had been cut up into the cliff until they came to the very top. And there was a great wall of rock and earth. And Daedalus designed the labyrinth. It was so clever. 
they had lots of branches and tunnels and you know it was so clever that you know basically once you'd gone down one tunnel that was it you just end up going back to the middle and whatever way you try to get out you just end up back in the middle you try and go out that way you end up back in the middle you try and go out that way you end up back in the middle so basically once you've gone in that's it lost underground forever and all these slaves they dug it out and Daedalus he had the design in his head he didn't even need to draw it but he did every day with a stick in the earth so the slaves could see what they were doing and this just went on and on a whole year went past and another year until finally it was all dug out and what you could see if you were standing on the side uh, on the on the top of the cliff would be this great rock face and then a tunnel of darkness just going in and then it, it parted and there was a way this way and a way that way you could choose either way you might go this way you might go that way and once you'd gone in and you were out of sight and you couldn't see daylight anymore that was it you'd never find your way out again and all the rock and the rubble and the earth that they dug out, they threw over the edge of the cliff into the sea. And when it was finally finished, the slaves were taken away in rowing boats. And Daedalus and his son Icarus were on their own on the island for the first time. They'd never been there on their own, just on their own before. And the sun was setting over the sea and all the birds were flying overhead, the gulls and the curlews and all the, the great broad albatross and the little ones. And by where the water was lapping at the bottom, the wading birds and the ones with long beaks. And you know, during lockdown, uh, during lockdown, we've had this incredible bird song, haven't we? Just imagine that. And it got darker and darker as the sun got redder and redder and then it was gone. And then they heard it. The sound of the drum. was the king's ship. Maybe there were 20 guards rowing it and it was getting louder and louder and it was getting closer and closer. And there was another sound as well. The sound the monster made. Now you all know who the monster is, don't you? I expect, who, who was it? the minotaur, the head of a bull with the horns, the body of a man. A bull is a very savage beast. You don't want to be in a field with a bull that will gore you with its horns. But a man now, that is even more savage. Surely human beings are the most savage of all the creatures on the earth. And this one so strong, this great body and they seeming to have not really very much thought in there, just anger and hate. This enormous strong creature was brought to the shore of the island in the darkness. And by the light of fire torches, the guards took it and forced it with their swords and their spears up the steps towards where Daedalus and Icarus were. And there was the king as well, wrapped in a cloak against the cold of the night, watching in satisfaction as the guards forced this howling, lowing, screaming monster in. It took one of the passageways the guards, they didn't want to get too close, so they used their spears to, to poke it and prod it and it stumbled in and you could hear its horns clattering against the top 
of the passageway against the stone. And he could hear it hammering from side to side. And that lowing sound, that sound of a bull shrieking. But it was getting quieter. And it was getting quieter. Until you could sort of hear it was there, but it was just so far off. They knew the Minotaur was lost in the heart of the labyrinth. And King Minos in the darkness of the night, wrapped up in his warm blankets, he smiled. And he turned to Daedalus and his son Icarus and he said, you did well. Because you have done so well, I am going to give you a choice. You cannot be allowed to live. Now you know my secret and all the secrets of the labyrinth, but I will let you choose the manner of your death. Shall I throw you from the cliff or shall I send you into the dark tunnels? And Icarus was just shaking his head and Daedalus put his head in his hands. <laughs> said the king, I will send you into the dark tunnels. Guards and the guards with their spears started pushing and poking at the old man and the, the young, pushing them in until they were gone. And when the guards peeked in and they shone their torches down, they could just see the tunnel was empty. So um, the king went down all the steps again into the boat and then boom, boom, boom. You could hear the sound of the drum. Disappearing. Until it was just the waves and the sea birds. And inside the labyrinth, Daedalus and Icarus huddled together. Of course, Daedalus had built and designed the labyrinth himself. And being clever as he was, he knew that something like this might happen. And he had made himself a little hiding place just inside the entrance. And that is where they were, huddled together, just shielded by a little piece of rock. So if you looked through, it looked as if there was nobody down there. And they came out into the night. And Icarus said, Father, he said, you can build anything. You, you think of everything. Now, he said, use beeswax from the hive. Use um, pieces of twig, use, use anything you can find, twine, anything, and build us a boat, and we will row to safety. And Douglas said, there is an island of safety, and it's not so far away, my son, but we cannot row there. The king is watching the island. He will see any boat leave, and he will send his own men after it in an instant. And they'll have m many people rowing. They'll catch us. But we are truly trapped here, said Icarus. No, said Daedalus, I just need time to think. Lie down, sleep and I will think. And Icarus completely trusted his father and he just lay down um, on the hillside and Daedalus took off his cloak and he laid it down over Icarus to keep him warm while he slept. And he thought, and he had an idea, and he built, and he created, and he made, and soon enough, it was finished. And in the morning, Icarus woke up, and Daedalus said, my son, he said, I have something to show you. This is going to save you and took him to the side of the cliff. And there he had built, using beeswax, the thinnest and finest, most flexible twigs, and 
feathers from the birds. What had he built? Wings? said Icarus. Father, put them on. Said Daedalus, so Icarus, he put one arm on, put the other arm on. Daedalus said there were not enough feathers for two sets of wings, but I've made myself a boat and, uh, and oars and I will row after you. You will fly to the island of safety. I will row. I'll be there straight after you. No, said Icarus. What did you say about the king? Up at, uh, I thought you said he was watching. Will he not, uh, will he not send his, his men after you? And Daedalus said, you are my son and I love you and I want you to be safe and you are going to do what I say. I am going to go in the boat and you are going to fly. Now listen to me, he said, this is important. When you're flying to the island of safety, keep it in front of you, keep it in your vision. Do not fly too close to the sun or it will melt the wax. The feathers will fall off the wings and you'll fall into the sea and you'll drown because you can't swim. And do not go too close to the waves or the spray will come up and it will clog the fine feathers and they'll become heavy and you'll fall into the sea and you will drown. Not too high and not too low. Not too high, not too low. He said, be safe, Father. He said, I'll see you in the island. And he watched as his father went down to where the boat was, this beautiful, beautiful boat with these long wooden oars. His father just made up out of nothing. And uh, with his wings on, he just took a step and he just felt himself lifting up and he was flying. And he could go so smoothly, as smoothly as the seagulls themselves. Not too high, not too low. It was clear sky. And uh, the spray was glittering down below as the sun hit it. The sea was so blue. And there was his father. And just for a moment, everything was perfect. And then they heard it, both of them. It was the sound of the drum. It was the sound of the king's ship. There must have been 20 men rowing it. It was so fast. It was cutting through the waves towards them. And as Icarus heard it, he turned to see what it was. touched the sea and a great spray of water came up and clogged all the feathers down one side and the next thing he fell into the sea and it was so heavy he couldn't pull himself up and he was drowning. Daedalus saw far ahead his beloved son floundering around being pulled under drowning and no matter how he rode he couldn't seem to reach him he was just too far away and he could hear behind him the king's ship with all the men rowing and the drum coming and in that moment of desperation came a moment of inspiration he took off his cloak and he attached it to one of the oars and he lifted it up in his little boat and the stiff breeze filled the cloak and it became a sail. Daedalus had invented the world's first sail. And now they were going so fast. 
it was tearing through the water because you know sails they go really go fast and he only just as he was whipping past he only just had time to whisk Icarus into the boat with him and then they were off and although the king's men they were rowing and rowing they had quite a big ship and they just couldn't go as fast and Daedalus and Icarus escaped to the island of safety where they lived happily So I hope you like that happy ending to the story of Daedalus and Icarus. And as you look at the beautiful painting, maybe you can think of your own ending or the other ending, the more well-known one. And there's a worksheet on the Leighton House website, which you can download. And it's got some uh, really lovely um, activities. We loved seeing the things that you did already and you've tweeted us and uh, sent things in and it's really nice. So if you do any creative work, most definitely do um, put it up on social media if you want to, tag us in so we can share it so everyone can see how, how good you are. And I will see you next week for a very interesting story. Bye bye.